His eyes like bullets burn, the sun's upon a gambling day. His queen smiled low and blissfully, let's make some wretched fool to pay. Plainer was she did agree. Mike's Music Method. Hey y'all, come on in. We're doing some Towns Van Zanti, Mr. Mud and Mr. Gold. Mr. Gold and Mr. Mud, how do you say it? This song has been requested quite a bit and I get why. It's a great Towns Van Zandt song. So let's learn it. It's a flat picked song. A flat pick is a fancy word for a regular pick. Don't let those hip kids fool you by calling it a flat pick. It just means a regular pick. It is, you know, it can be a beginner piece because the chords are pretty straightforward, but to get it to the speed and accuracy that Towns does, it is actually quite an advanced piece. But if you're not a great player, it's still a really good place to start because there's some cool pick strum technique that applies to all sorts of different songs. And you can always just play it slow and aim for playing it faster. But let's dive right in, Mr. Mud and Mr. Gold. <laughs> Measure one. Remember, capo is on the second fret. Check this out. I am picking the fifth string, and then I am gently doing down up only on the top three strings. This is going to be true for almost the entire song. Really important because you want these two um, elements there to sound like two different guitars, right? When I'm picking this fifth fret or the fifth string, I st when then I strum, I still want that boom still want it to ring out. So you don't want to hit the fifth string and then strum the fifth again because you get rid of that two guitar illusion. So pick the fifth, gently strum down up. And keep that pick hand very light. You don't want it to be, you don't want there to be that much resistance and have it sound real harsh. So it's like a gentle brushing. And you can experiment with how aggressive you want it to be, but the kind of amateur mis mistake is to hold that too tight and not there, let there be enough give. So we've got five, gently brush down up, and then I'm picking the fourth string, and then gently brushing down up on the top three. Top three brush, fourth string. And the hard part of this song is getting it up to speed, so if you're not used to a flat pick, take it very slow. There's no need to rush. Play at a tempo way slower than the song and you need to learn something before you practice it. So learn it, make sure you're doing it really clean, and practice it as slow and as long as you have to before pushing the speed. Please listen to that advice. <laughs> Measure two, same idea, fifth string open, brushing the top three again, down up, and then we're gonna do a little run on, we're gonna alternate pick it. So on the fourth string, I'm doing the second fret, and then I'm doing open. And my right hand is, is picking down, up. So we're alternate picking down, up. And then I do the second fret on the fifth string, on the A string, and that's a down again. So it's down, up, down. And the frets are two, open, two. So from the beginning. Whew. Measure three, we have a C chord. Normal old C chord. We are picking the fifth string, and then we're hammering on the fourth. I'm gonna lift my middle finger, and I'm hammering down on the fourth string. So fifth string, then lift the middle and hammer down on the fourth. And then I'm gonna strum the top three down up, and then I actually do the third string open at the end of that. So fifth, hammer, down, up. Measure four, we play that third string open again. We're just coming out of that C chord. We're staying on the C chord. Third string open, then I'm doing down up. So third string, <laughs> then down up. And then I'm running to open two. So I've got the second fret on the G string, the third string, lifting it to open. So similar as before, but a different string set. Two open and then two on the fourth string. And remember, our right hand is down, up, down. 
got to do that alternate picking if you ever want to get it to speed. And measure three to four, the transition is weird, so practice it. It's going to sound a little strange when you do it slow, but I assure you this is what Towns is doing. So from the beginning of three, we have three, four. So it might sound funny playing that third string open twice in a row. But it is that cool stagger rhythm. Boo! Guys, the value for value model. Um, what I'm doing here is giving you all this content for free. None of it is behind a paywall. So many people have their content behind a paywall. So please understand the, the time I put in, that I put into getting these tabs super accurate and making these videos. I feel like I'm providing you guys with an awesome service. So consider what these videos are worth for you. Maybe every song you, you learn is worth a hundred bucks to you. You know, I don't know how many guitar lessons you'd have to take to get to that point. Or maybe it's worth 40 bucks. Or I don't know, you know, maybe you think every month Mike's providing me with like a, a guitar lesson every week. Maybe that's worth 160 bucks a month. Or I don't know, 10, maybe it's worth 10 bucks a month or five bucks a video. It's a value for value model. So, what, you know, if, these, if my channel suddenly disappeared from the internet, you know, how would you feel? You go, oh man, I should have gave Mike, you know, 30 bucks a month. Those videos were at least worth 30 bucks a month. So consider that the value for value model. I don't want anybody to have to, to what am I trying to say? If people don't have the means, then by all, by all means, uh, enjoy the content for free. But of you out there who can't afford it, please consider it because by keeping this channel going, you're also allowing all these younger people or people who are hard, hard on times to still access these videos. And that's the cool thing about this. Those who can support, please support so that you can keep these videos for free for everyone. All the young kids wanting to learn, all the people hard on times. You get what I'm saying? I'm gonna start being redundant, but please honestly, seriously consider the value for value model. What is this song worth to you? PayPal, Patreon, the links are always down below in the descriptions. Hit me up if you wanna Venmo me um, or just send me a loving email at mikesmusicmethod at gmail.com if you don't have the means right now. You can still supply value with your kind words and thoughtful comments. All right, let's keep going with the song. Beep. Measure five, we have a D minor chord. Now, two ways to play this. There are some moments in the song where at the end of the chord, he's transitioning just by lifting it up and playing it open. It doesn't sound good when you play it slow, but when you're playing something really fast, that's fairly common to just give your left hand a break and just play a chord as open, right? Because the ear, it's happening so fast that you're more hearing the the percussive and rhythmic element of it than you are the melodic element of it. So measure five, we've got a D minor. I know people think I play this funny. I use my pinky. You can use your ring finger if you want on that third fret, but it's one, three, two. My hands, I don't know, I guess I can do it this way, but I like using my pinky because it frees up this one. But it doesn't matter how you do it in this song. So we got fourth string, strumming down up on the top three fifth string, and then you can strum the top three again down up, or as the tab is written, oh sorry, he's kind of lifting it up and he's transitioning to the E minor. I don't know if he's doing that every time, there's many versions of the song, hard to know for sure, but I would practice on actually playing the full chord just to get better at transitioning. But if you think it sounds cooler lifting it up, then do that. And we go straight into E minor for measure six here. Just playing the sixth string open, gently strumming the top three down up. And then that same run we did before, where we have second fret on the fourth string, open, and then second fret on the fifth string. So for measure five, we have the D minor. Measure seven, almost done with the intro. We have an A minor. Here it's hard to tell. He's doing different things at different times. So you're picking the fifth string. Sometimes he's only hitting the fourth string. Other times it's a little bit more of the chord. So I kind of hedge my bets and put it in between where I'm really only strumming the fourth and the third. But you, it's not gonna matter when it's up to speed. You don't have to be super specific about it, but just know sometimes he's treating that all as a melodic thing without the chord. And then we have a hammer on. We can lift our whole hand here and we're hammering into a G chord, but you really just need the open to the three. And then we're going to strum the middle three strings down up. So that measure, fifth, down up, hammer, down up. And then right back to A minor in measure eight here. But we just have pick the fifth, down, pick the fourth, down up. So one, two, three, four, and and that is the entire
entire intro. Let's do it slow for measure one, two, three, four. Measure nine, let's start the verse. We're just gonna breeze through it. The intro is the hard part. It's easy from here on out. So measure nine, picking that fifth string, strumming down, picking the fourth string, strumming down. And that's it, that's nine. We're keeping it, he keeps it simpler because he's singing over it. So 10 is the same. Then 11 is just a C chord. Pick five, strum the top three, pick four. And I'm doing all of these as down strums. And then 12 is gonna be fifth string strum. And then we have a little run here, which we've seen before, just two open, two, third string to the fourth. And then measure 13 is a D minor, fourth strum, fifth strum, oh, I missed it. And then again, same on 14. Then 15, we have an E minor. Here I wrote it funny, and again, I'm probably just strumming the top three. You can do four if you want. 16, we still have the E minor, but then it switches to a G chord. And the G, I'm just doing six, and then strumming three or four of them. And that is it for the verse. That repeats. So then the last stanza of each verse, if we look at 17, is it's all the same in the tab, right? You can download the tab for free at mikesmusicmethod.com. There's a fly on my leg. Uh, it's all free, so download, go download your free tab. Free, unbelievable, what a guy. Measure 17, it's the same as the verse was, because it is still the verse, but all I wanna show you is that when it's the last stanza, he plays through all this the same. cuts it short. In other words, you're just taking away the very last measure of E minor and G. I don't know why I rewrote the whole thing, but I did because a lot of people don't like too many repeat signs and to see confusing things, second endings, you know, so it's simple for you. That's it. And then he cuts it short just by doing that one part of E minor and then it's straight back into the beginning. Let's just do a slow run of the verse with the words. One, two, three. The wicked king of clubs awoke It was to his queen he turned His lips were laughing as they spoke His eyes like bullets burned The sun's upon the gambling day His queen smiled low and blissfully Let's make some wretched fool to play Plain it was, she did agree. And you keep going with it, except like I said before, at the very ending, you're just gonna do the E minor, and then not go to the G, just interrupt it straight with the A minor. And that is the entire song, except. <sighs> Measure 24 is the ending, let's just talk about it. He does 23, the very last time, and then he walks through this little run. It's just open three, then open on the fifth string, and then he just plays an A minor chord. The entire song, it's so simple. So again, the format is you have that intro, you do your verses, however many there are, right? Sometimes he's singing quite a few stanzas. But the very last time, you're just removing that last bar of the verse. So you have that E minor just for four counts, right? One, two, three, four. And then you transition back to the opening. So that's it. And then it just repeats the intro, the verses, intro verses, and then the very tiny little coda at the end where he just does that little open three walk into the A minor chord. It's so easy, you did it. Now getting it fast and smooth is a little bit more difficult and he has a really, he has a really heavy attack to it. What I recommend is mess around with, and I know he does this on an acoustic, people always ask, I play an electric so I don't have to have another microphone here. 
I don't have super fancy gear. So what I'm just doing is direct lining this guitar so I don't have to worry about the mic. People complaining, in my early videos, I get it, the guitar would be too quiet. This just keeps the tone and the volume consistent. <laughs> I'm not recommending playing these songs on, on an electric guitar. You could if you want to. But experiment with where you're picking with that right hand. Um, the more you get closer to the bridge, uh, the more trebly it's gonna sound. a lot of that and it's actually a pretty cool sound so to get the speed and the feel is going to be the hard part but don't rush any of that set the metronome really slow and try to get the feel at you know 60 percent of the tempo which notes is he hitting harder than the other ones and pay very specific attention to that and only at the very end bump the speed because this song's going to sound stupid if you're playing it fast and sloppy just don't do it do yourself a favor Practice slow and keep it slow for a long time and slowly build up over time. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Let's do a nice slow run from the top, the whole thing here. Two, three, four. slower if you need to. Um, I had slower takes, so I did that a little quicker just so you guys could start to feel, you know, like you're more in the song rather than playing it bit by bit. Go get it. Comment below. Let me know how it went for y'all. Until next time.